What's up, Pharmacy Nation? I'm Pharmacy Joe. Thank you for being a listener of the Elective Rotation, a critical care and hospital pharmacy podcast. This is episode 566. In this episode, I'll discuss the effect of phenylephrine, push, prior to continuous infusion norepinephrine in patients with septic shock. I have all the evidence supporting today's show linked up in the show notes at pharmacyjoe.com slash episode 566. Push dose vasopressors as a temporizing measure for profound hypotension in critically ill patients is frequently used in many institutions. However, the extent of the data for this strategy comes from use in pregnant women experiencing hypotension from the effects of spinal anesthesia for C-section. This patient population and mechanism of hypotension is far removed from that of the critically ill septic shock population. While it's logical to want to fix hypotension promptly with a bolus of vasopressor prior to continuous infusion, the effects of this practice in the critically ill is unknown. To begin to examine this practice, researchers at the Cleveland Clinic Health System performed a retrospective, multi-centered cohort study looking at the effect of phenylephrine push prior to continuous infusion norepinephrine in patients with septic shock. Patients receiving an initial phenylephrine push were propensity score matched 1 to 2 to those not receiving an initial phenylephrine push. In all, 141 phenylephrine push patients were matched to 282 patients not receiving a phenylephrine push. The primary outcome was the achievement of hemodynamic stability within 3 and 12 hours of norepinephrine initiation. This was defined as maintaining a MAP of 65 millimeters of mercury or greater for at least 6 hours without a need for an increase in continuous norepinephrine infusion of dosage. The authors had three main findings. First, more patients who received a phenylephrine push achieved hemodynamic stability at hour 3 than those who did not. This was 28% versus 18%. Phenylephrine push receipt was independently associated with hemodynamic stability within three hours with an odds ratio 1.8, but was not associated with hemodynamic stability at 12 hours. And finally, phenylephrine push receipt was independently associated with higher ICU mortality. The adjusted odds ratio was 1.88, and the 95% confidence interval was 1.1 to 3.2. Because of the higher incidence of ICU mortality, the authors concluded caution is warranted when clinicians are considering the use of phenylephrine pushes in patients with septic shock. Although the propensity matching used attempts to remove confounders, a retrospective study of this sort still cannot prove causation. It is also unknown if the mortality difference is from using phenylephrine as the bolus vasopressor compared with norepinephrine or from the act of giving a bolus vasopressor itself. It's still my preference for a pharmacist to be involved in the care of these hypotensive patients as they have a chance to predict the need for norepinephrine and have it at bedside with the bag spiked, tubing primed, and infusion pump ready to go before the physician has a chance to think about using a bolus versus starting a drip. To access my free download area with 20 different resources to help you in your practice, go to pharmacyjoe.com free. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next episode of the Elective Rotation.